Welcome to Worlds Collide, the wrestling card podcast for wrestling fans by wrestling fans. Featuring Tony Bella from WrestlingTradingCards.com. This is like a, a stock market. Like- and Zan Morning from Wrestling With Cards on YouTube. And I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer, I'm just posing the question. Join them as they navigate the world of wrestling cards, helping you build a bigger and better collection and making some money along the way. What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to Worlds Collide. I'm Zan from Wrestling With Cards. I'm Tony from WrestlingTradingCards.com. The best wrestling card channels <laughs> on the internet, bar none. So we came together this to is do true. this podcast. Yeah. I mean, we met through social media here because of our love and interest of uh, wrestling cards. Yep. And it just keeps going. Like I keep getting more and more into it, you know, different avenues, but we just keep getting deeper and deeper. I don't think I'm ever going to give it up. Even if Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm learning so much more, you know, here it was as a longtime collector thinking that I'm going to, I know it all. I know everything I know about this. I know every set. I've got it all. <laughs> and I just keep learning more and more every day. Speaking of a longtime collector, today's topic how to organize and store your wrestling cards. And you're an old, old, older (laughs) time collector. As you said, I've been collecting for quite a while too. So we're going to have some crossover. I can guarantee it. Yeah. There's so many different ways to organize, store your collection. Some right, some wrong, some kind of in the middle. As you were collecting growing up and then in through, as you kind of got through your journey of collecting, what did you start with? What were you shown? How did, how did your storage and organization start? Uh, for me, I shoe went box? from, huh? Shoebox. I started the shoebox. Yep. That's classic. I started with the shoebox when I, uh, long before I even collected wrestling cards, I collected baseball cards and I would have a shoebox and take construction paper and then I would cut them out so they're a little bit longer than the actual shoot, the height of the shoebox. And I would have all my teams sort of alphabetically. So I have A's and the Angels and the, and a Brewer. I mean, I have it all going through. And then I would sit down and watch baseball games if I was, you know, watching an Angel game and go, oh, hey, the Angels are playing the Yankees. And I go, oh, Thurman Munson's up. And I pull out his card and I read the stats. And that's, I was really into it that way. Uh, but then as I got older, I started doing uh, uh, binders. And I kind of stuck with binders for a long time. Uh, I, I very rarely kept, um, you know, cases, uh, snap cases or even sliders. I rarely kept that. I maybe kept extras in those, but I kind of think it also depends on what it is you're collecting. If you're sing- yeah. collecting just collecting sets, binders are kind of cool. Put them in nine pocket sheets. Um, if you're just collecting autographs, you know, you want to put those, you know, get them slabbed, I guess, display them a lot of different ways. I mean, um, I did most of my stuff in binders. Let's talk about binders. Uh, do you think that's probably the best way to showcase uh, sets if you're a set collector? If you're just doing base sets, I think it's okay. Why not? I mean, um, I even went so far as when uh, Fleer had the license for WWE product, I uh, made my own binders. I used to get the sell sheets and some, oftentimes there were two-sided sell sheets. You have a front and a back. So I would take them and get my binder. I'd slide the front side in the front and the back side in the back, and then make my own spine. And it would have, uh, you know, little samples of the cards and the size like that, the name of the name of the That's card perfect. set. I'd take them in, uh, you know, thicker quality uh, paper. I print it out on my printer at home, <laughs> cut it out, slide it in there, and I had my own binder. And I would keep all the base. I keep the promos, followed by the base set, followed by the easiest chase set to the harder chase set to the harder chase set. And I'm assuming those are just in the standard plastic sleeves. Standard nine things. pocket sheets, yeah. And they, they'd sit upright. And I'd always make sure that I would always buy all my sets. Had I would never recycle nine pocket sheets. I'd always buy brand new brand nine new. pocket sheets so they were firm. So they wouldn't sit there and like rest and bend that bottom cards. And speaking of that, that was my next question. Um, what experiences do you have as far as like the negatives of a binder? That's the negative right there. If you don't take care of your binders and don't, dis- uh, some people like to stand them up and they keep them stand up like that in, in that way. Uh, and over time, that bottom sheets, if they're not, if your nine pocket sheets aren't firm enough, uh, they'll sag. And when they sag, those bottom cards from the bottom of the nine pocket sheets will get damaged. They'll start to curve and bend. I've even done so much as before in the past where I've had things like this 
where I've had a nice firm binder like this that actually also zips inside and it's firm on here so the it's longer than the nine pocket sheets and so it sits on there and the nine pocket sheets never touch the ground and that's what i was going to ask you next is that your kind of alternative now to the binders it is it's, it's what i've stuck with for the last god probably 10 years now for anything i've actually uh even though when i stopped collecting back in 07 08 i still uh i converted everything over from anything that was in, in a slider or a snap or in nine pocket sheets, I put them in these binders when I found these binders. Um, I don't even know the brand, to be honest with That's you. That's what I was going to ask you next, because I, I have one I've started using, and I'm curious if we're using the same one. What uh, what brand is it that you use? The brand is, uh, it's a, I, I don't remember the actual brand, but the name of it is called Z Folio. And I think that this might be something similar. It has it's a very, it's nice, it's got uh, even a, a pocket in the front you can slide things into if you want to as well. Do yours use the plastic sheets? uh meaning like you have to put the nine pocket in i do i put the nine pockets okay, in myself see, mine has them mine is double-sided and has them all built in and within each one is a felt back so you can nice. actually penny sleeve the cards and then put them into the nine pockets yes i can and, just say i can put i can penny sleeve these as well too i just um it's a really hard case that i like that uh it's, it's pad on the outside again the the top and bottom is longer than the actual um not, uh, sheet that so it same. never rests. It never rests on the actual sheets. Always that's, on the. That's one thing I ran into is I have like a these one by one cubes that I keep vinyl in, and I've kind of you know as I'm getting rid of vinyl, I've been using sports cards. So I started player collecting Shaq and Dennis Rodman again. Well, my standard binder fits in that section, but these Z folios are like two or three inches taller, so they don't fit in there. So that's an issue. But they're also I think I paid twenty dollars a piece and considering what people are used to paying for standard binders and pages, it's quite sure. a lot. Sure. Yeah. But, I think it's a relatively good price and it's something you're, you're, you're storing your collection anyway. So it's, it's kind of worth uh, investing in a, a decent binder if you're going to do that way. Yeah. I, I really do. I think um, for player collections and binders or sorry, player collections and sets, I think binders are really the only option because I don't know how many people I've talked to that have said, well, I've got sets, but they're, you know, there's 200 cards in the set and it's in a box. I've got to just like flip through every single oh. one. And it's just not fun. Yeah. So you, you put them in long boxes, you know, like a 3000 or 5,000 count box and you just lay them all in there. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And that's the next thing. Like, uh, what do you, do you use those for any of your stuff? I do for excess stuff for singles of excess stuff. Um, especially things that I know that, um, it's not going to be part of my collection. It's just, uh, there is extras maybe to help someone fill their set. Maybe. Um, there was a time, uh, a while ago, years ago, I had this gentleman at St. Louis that was buying, uh, 2000 wrestling cards from me every month. And then he would take those. And I guess he owned vending machines all throughout the St. Louis area. And then we'd take them and he'd put them in vending machines <laughs> throughout his, you know, and uh, so every month he's like, hey, I'm ready for another lot. And I just go through and just go through all my singles and just uh, start pulling out, which I regret to this day now. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I do it. Yeah. I mean, I've got a, I have so much stuff. I just don't I, I can't put everything in binders. OK, so speaking of that, uh, what do you find if you've got a lot of stuff? What do you think is the best way to organize it to keep it kind of out of the way? For, you well, for wrestling, for me, I put everything in by, by year and then by uh, alphabetical. And are you still doing that with binders on the main stuff? You're and binders, uh, yes, I do the same thing. I, I put in like this binder I just showed you, I just pull out of stories the day, mm -hmm. contains all my stuff from 85, 87. Okay. So do you have very many graded cards that you're keeping? I don't. I really don't. I don't have any. I'm just, I'm brand new to the grading. So I, um, I, I had... And I regret it now. Uh, and it took me forever. I just sold it a year and a half ago. I had a 9.5 Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, 95 cards. Yikes. That was uh, from BS, uh, BSG, 9.5. I couldn't sell it. I had it listed for $100, $100, $100. No one ever buy it. I think I sold it for 50 bucks. Someone finally bought it for 50 bucks. <laughs> well, that person's happy. Yeah, I'm sure they're pretty happy. You know what, though? Um, you, you can't look back. You got to just keep going forward. I can't. And, and, and you know what? It's, it's not something that I got graded. I got it in a collection of stuff that came in a lot. So I didn't personally go out and get it, it graded. So it's not like I invested anyway, in it. Um, and I probably paid 50 to 100 bucks for that box of cards anyways. Yeah. Oh, you're break even then maybe. So, uh, but, you know, 
I, I do keep long bo uh, boxes like that. Um, I do have, for a long time, I used to use uh, these drawers. They're like 5,000 count boxes, but they have drawers in them. Oh yeah, and I've I, seen those. I don't believe they make them anymore. There was this German couple that I used to buy my supplies from uh, in California at Frankenstein's that uh, I guess they bought the mold to make those. So I used to always buy them from them and I would put all my raw deal cards in there because they're slightly smaller than a regular trading card, very tiny, rounded corners and everything. And I um, uh, started put, using those to start putting all my extra wrestling cards in. And uh, I've been moving that stuff out because I don't like them anymore. They're really hard. If you don't put them in the right way and open that drawer, things start getting caught and they oh, start damaging. So I'm done using those. I think great. The, you can go so many different ways with graded cards. You can literally just use a shoebox if you wanted. They also don't, make, don't they make special boxes for graded stuff? Getting to too. Yeah, they make yeah. specific boxes. They make like these vault things for them. They make these crazy like briefcase things with locks on them that are fire i've seen some custom ones that are pretty pretty cool looking yeah um my only thing with graded cards is like okay i'll, I'll just lay the scenario out here like say you have 200 to two, 300 graded cards and you're just wanting to go look at those how, how are you going to display those you can't really like you'd have to have a showcase and then that takes up, that takes up so much room so you you have to like put them away and then just kind of go get them when you need them uh that's the only drawback to graded cards, really. And I used to do that a little bit with some of my cards I wanted to feature. Like if I had like, uh, you know, when I had uh, that Farouk knee brace card, I put it in like a screw down. And when I had the uh, uh, Stephen McMahon championship clash autograph card, you know, I, I put that in a little screw down. I, I had a, a, a kickstand on the back of it. Oh, cool. And so it, it had a built-in already kickstand on the back. You just and you pop it and it would display it. And I had a whole closet, just open the closet up and I'd have them all kind of there. Like, okay, Stephanie, you're coming out, put you in a sleeve, put you someplace else, put you in here now. It's like, it's just, that's my biggest thing is people who collect and how they store their stuff. Uh, how do you go about, do you view your stuff? I mean, in, do you go back and look at it all in your binders? Do you look at it through your, your slabs? How do you do it? I mean, I don't, most of the graded stuff I have, I'm either holding it to move or I, like the stuff i'm planning on keeping i do have uh you can i mean you've got it. stuff right behind you already those, I can those see. are yeah there's there's not a ton there but those are all in acrylic uh like little frame things that you just set it in there and they prop it up mm -hmm. uh, one of the coolest things i've seen i don't personally have any but a lot of people are starting to get them are these wall displays that are specifically designed for cards so okay fit, like maybe like 30 40 graded cards and then it stores nicely on your wall did you see my uh, my interview with Heath Slater? Yeah, uh, yeah he, and he ha he had a uh, display on, on the back of his wall. He, he had a <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the similar ones. I don't his were see they make them like that too, where they're made for the standard size cards, like you could put a top loader in, mm -hmm. but they also make them for the graded, and they make different sized ones. You know, you could do like a like a ten card, or you could do like a hundred card. Its prices vary. Oh, wow. That's really the only solution I've seen to graded cards, but it's, it's uh, getting very close, to like shadow boxing them almost. A little bit. They also make graded card binders, believe it or not. I think they're terrible looking. Uh, <laughs> your binders end up being like three feet tall because they just, the way they stack. But and what, do they put them in like nine pocket or four pocket? They're four pocket. Four and they're pocket. specifically designed for the slab to go in. But I'm not a fan of those at all. I'm not a fan of the top loader ones either. Have you seen those? I have seen those too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not, not a, a big fan. fan of those either. No. So I think we're pretty much on the same page on uh, binders, on sets and things you're planning on keeping unless it's a slab. And then I guess displaying it the best you can or putting it away. I mean, I, I, I've had uh, on my, on my, uh, my YouTube channel, I've had um, uh, Paul and Chuckster on many times. And Paul has this uh, really cool, uh, like a cabinet that he keeps all his collections in. And his are all in binders from what I, I, I've seen. And so, and they're all done it by year and alphabetical, I'm sure. Um, and uh, it's very well organized. Um, I just hope that he's using the, you know, a nice buyer that's making sure his cards aren't getting, you know. Yeah, that's something if we have. If I'm we sure have, he is. Yeah. If we have him on the show or I have him on my show or you have him on again, that's a question we're going to have to start asking is, yep. all right, it's time for what condition are your binders? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start asking everybody. Yeah. So, uh, when's the last time you changed? Like, it's like having a car, man. Like, when's the last time you changed your binder? <laughs> <laughs>
Sounds one like your uh, looks like your sheets need to be changed. One other thing on the binders I want to touch on too is I, I I still like. Well, first off, if you're doing the old school metal ones, you know the the three ring binders. Mm -hmm. I think the D ring is the only one that works. You yes, know, flat flat on one side and curves on the other because yes. if, you, if you have the curve all the way around, think they get caught under the metal. Have you had that yep. happen? And then after once in a while, not only it becomes a habit, it ends up stretching the metal a little bit because you have to keep yep. going back and forth to the point now where you can't properly close it yep. and your sheets start falling out. Yep. And then when you can't close it, you start like trying to push it together and then the metal gets bent like flat yep. the other direction. It's a mess. Not fun. No. And um, the other thing I want to touch about on the binders is if you want to try to find a balance on the price, so maybe you don't want to go spend 20, 25, 30, whatever on a binder. Um, how much do you think yours was if you were ballparking it? I got these in a collection of stuff. <laughs> they were all brand new and still in their packaging. Um, I believe they're probably 25, 30 bucks a piece. Okay. So probably about the same. Yeah. I guess if somebody wanted to kind of just go as cheap a route as possible, I, I still think those metal D rings and then like um, just the standard nine is that's yeah, you, can, about you can pick any of those up at office max office depot staples. I still think that's an okay route to go. If you have stuff that's either already damaged or it's lower end stuff that you just don't care about. Like what, it, and, and for me, sometimes that you could put sets into that. You could. I mean, it, sometimes it, it, you can have like a whole bunch. Like this is my, <laughs> you already have your pen, like your penny stock cards. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is, this is my, my premium penny card <laughs> stock stuff over <laughs> here and keep that in a binder kind of thing. Maybe I, I don't know uh, to make them really available. I mean, especially it depends if you're just uh, even if you're like, um, doing shows if we ever get to act back to that in this world mm -hmm. um where you want to have them display where people can thumb through easily and kind of look through them it's kind of a good thing to do binders is always a good way to go i mean uh if you're not strictly doing graded stuff and you're just having loose raw cards binders is always a good way to go i just be careful what kind of binders you're getting though because if you're looking to preserve your collection and keep it in a good quality uh it's important to get a good binder that one raises it's off the ground so it's not laying on the ground kind of thing with your nine pocket sheets another i've had so many that done that way so many another done question that way. with yours um have you had any damage for laying do you always stand it up or have you laid it down flat on either side i've uh i've almost exclusively kept them standing up standing up yeah i, was just I don't curious think if it damaged it anyway i may have laid them down in moving or something like that but i think they're always standing up I've had them where because of binders, I crisscross them because they don't like this way. So they get more in a box kind of thing. But um, I don't have a, any place to display my stuff and I'm not looking to collect anymore anyway. So I'm uh, just trying to find what I can. I'm finding that they're all still in, my, in the boxes and they're all standing up. Yeah, just one more thing on the binders. I think we've kind of come to a conclusion that that's the best way to like keep them if you're going to be looking at them. If you're not looking at them and it's clearly like you're using it for just leftover cards or if you're selling and you just have them in order i think the long boxes are the best for that if you have slabs you know you can go for a shoe box or you can go for the specifically made boxes either way um just one more thing i want to say is be careful on what you're putting in the binder no matter what it is because i don't care how good of a binder you have there's no way i'm putting you know raw hogan 82s in there or nope. or like you know um one of one transcendent vince auto or something like i'm not putting that <laughs> stuff in binders i'm sorry no it's just not i mean uh sometimes you got to keep your prize stuff <laughs> a yeah. little bit better yeah and keep your fun stuff that you like to look at all the time in the binders i, I actually think that's a perfect strategy I, I also think that to me because most of my cards i believe if not all of them in the binders all of my cards are actually penny sleeved and put in the <laughs> in the nine pocket sheet yeah if you can get the right ones that's the way to go so, I mean, uh, is there like a particular brand that you always use? I used to always use Ultra Pro. Ultra Pro or is it BCW? I, th I think maybe. That's the I, other brand. I, I think I'm pretty much been exclusively to Ultra Pro. Yeah, those are the two brands that I've, it's BWC or BCW. I don't remember what it is, but yeah, those are the two brands, but they actually are the ones that created the Z Folio. So that's what I, I got that off a recommendation from another podcast. And I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. And sure enough, it, it, they're great. Oh, nice. I'd have to check it out someday, but you know, right now everything's going in penny sleeves 
into card savers and then off to get graded. <laughs> and that's what the long boxes are perfect for because I've been doing that too. I've been just anything that goes in a card saver goes in the long box and it sits there until it goes to the grading companies. Yeah. Do you uh, sort your stuff out too if I, based on like, this is my next deck of 20 and 20 or whatever you're, you know, yeah, groups I you're have putting to in? because I have, I have stuff that's modern. I have stuff that qualifies as the older vintage stuff. And mm -hmm. then I have stuff that will not go for certain areas based on the price point because it's, you know, it, it's past certain price points. So I can't put it in at that level. Gotcha. So yeah, I do keep them organized there. And uh, I just organize. Uh, it's funny. We're going to go full circle here. You're talking about using pieces of paper. That's exactly how I organize stuff. Like once <laughs> I get something organized, I use paper to go in between all the cards. It's like I, uh, for my singles for a long time, I keep them in 5,000 count boxes. I would, uh, I, I collect wrappers too. So I mm -hmm. save all my wrappers for stuff that whether I've opened it or not, I go after the wrappers. I actually have a binder <laughs> that's filled with wrappers in nine pocket sheet <laughs> or, in, you know, um, and then uh, I will take those when I have extras, say like I'm opening the new uh, finest. And then I have my singles. I use one wrapper at the beginning right there to kind of, this is where the finest starts. And it kind of goes from oh, the cool. next wrapper cool to the idea. next one. So yeah. I just, uh, I mean, I'm throwing the wrappers away anyways for most, but I always keep one for myself. Yeah. And if, if, if you're not going to do that, you might as well use them for something cool. Like not that. to mention, I, not only do I keep one for myself, uh, you know, comic images to put different types of wrappers would be multiple covers of the wrappers on some I've other stuff. That. Yeah. So I've... I would save one of each copy, each kind. Gotcha. <laughs> I'd That's keep cool. a hobby one. I keep a retail one and there's two different versions of each one. So I'd have four wrappers from that release. Learn something every day. I'd heard there's different wrappers, but I did not know that for sure. Yeah. I'll show, I, I'll, I'll find that binder and I'll show you some of them. Uh, they did especially for, uh, for SmackDown. Awesome. Well, yep. if you have anything else for the storage, I think we've kind of just made full circle on this today. There's no, it's just like collecting. There's different ways to do it based on what you want to do. Just be it's, careful it's about what you're doing. Always different strokes for different folks. It's the thing is just be mindful of, of uh, taking the best care you can of the cards that you have, especially those that you're looking to either invest in or those that you're looking to um, just want to keep as decent as possible for your display. Yep. hundred percent agree. Tony, tell them where they can find you. They can find me at wrestlingtradingcards.com or, you know, on Twitter, if they want to, it's wrestling trade. I too. <laughs> I always have to look that up every time I'm going to me too. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't pick it. It's what they gave me. <laughs> and I'm Zan morning. You can just search that on social media. Also links to our social media and website and everything will be in the show description. Thanks for checking out the show. Make sure to share all over social. It's the best way we can get the podcast out to everybody. Leave us Absolutely. a review if you like it. And if you don't like it, leave us a nice review anyway. Yeah, anyways, I mean, come on. We're a wrestling community. Let's be nice to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, that's what we're here for is just continue building a wrestling card community because nobody else will. So we picked up the flag and we're running with it. I'm running with it, man. I love it. All right. Thanks for listening. See you guys. Out.